as I was walking up uh, one of the women's uh, in the movement, her stairs, there were all these pictures of Mao, of various Vietnamese women clutching guns, and me thinking to myself, hang on a minute, this is not to do with women. And that's what I kept saying, and I've been saying it for 50 years. Whenever I talk about domestic violence, your name comes up. I know. <laughs> I just wish there were more people in the field, you know. Um, and, and there aren't. There simply aren't. Uh, and especially anything to do with male violence. So, you know, the, the, this whole perpetrator thing. Uh, and it, the, the, the thing that makes me so sad that it's caused such a breach between the very, very... Um, what, what, it, it's a very difficult relationship between men and women. And when women 50 years ago really turned on men and the, the, and the whole attitude to everything, including the fact that Harriet Harman, who was then our Minister for Women, said that men weren't necessarily harmonious in marital relationships. It was just basically doing away with men as fathers as participators in family life. And gradually, as you've seen, and everybody's seen in the Western world, the destruction of marriage. You have seen this playing out, Erin. We are seeing almost the end result. Let's hope it's the end result and that it's now going to change. What I would like for the people who are listening to this conversation to understand is how did we get here? The end of 1969, when through all our universities, all our education systems, there was this, this move, this new move, and it was called Women's Liberation Movement, and it was incredibly fashionable. Every single newspaper was covering all this wonderful new world. Where And I, I was very much part of it because I was reading people like Jill Tweedy, who was a very famous journalist in those days in England, saying now women are going to cooperate, they're not going to compete against each other. And I was very excited and, and went to the big conferences. And then, really, I had a little group called the Gold Hawk Road Group. And we were sitting there at these conferences listening to these women on standing on these platforms saying, the new, the new family will be women and children. Essentially, basically, men would no longer count as part of family life. And we got up and we, we, did, we argued the best way we could. But essentially... It was too late in a strange way because the women's movement had been quietly operating throughout all the education systems. And the result was that the idea happened and that the, what was going to happen now, we were told, would be single parent families. It's quite interesting in those days because there were, there were huge holidays offered to, to women and children, single parent mothers, where, where the, the, they were told that they were the future that men would be expendable, that men as fathers weren't necessary, and lots and lots of studies to prove how well the children of single-parent families did. Well, we, as we know now, 50 years later, that's not at all the truth. When you say they, Erin, who orchestrated this? Well, really, essentially, if you, if you knew what you were talking about, it was essentially the communist movement, the destruction, the, I called it the planned destruction of the family. And I was well versed in all this simply because my parents were captured by the communists in Tinsin. And we didn't see them, but we being my twin sister and myself, for three years. Uh, and so my father, particularly, was he was in the foreign office. He was an expert in terms of, of what communism meant in real life. We were asked uh, at this the, the big conference I was at to form groups. Uh, and to, 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 to invite each other into our groups. For instance, mine was the Gold Hawk Road group where I lived. And we were to discuss various issues. The first of all being, of course, that uh, our, our husbands were our oppressors. And I remember saying to this very fierce lady who turned up for the meeting, hang on a minute, I consider it a luxury that I can stay home with my children and I have a choice. If I wanted to, I could go out to work. If not, I'd stay home and be with my children. My husband has no such choice. He has to go out and earn money. 
So why am I being oppressed? And her attitude to all that was, ah, you, you, you're not recognizing your oppression. 